Hello there. The silent majority in Ireland is rising up and forcing their politicians to start listening to them instead of to their paymasters in the EU, the WEF and the UN. Unlike the UK, specifically England, the Irish people are once again finding their voice. Let's hope the English can start finding theirs on the 1st of June by joining Tommy Robinson on his London Lawfare March. The people of Ireland are becoming more infuriated by the day over the rate of inward migration. This is what Politico.eu said back in January this year. The pace of social change has been staggering, particularly on the relatively impoverished north side of Dublin. Barely a generation ago, Ireland had only 3.5 million people and almost no immigrants in a country where its own people were its biggest export. By contrast, a fifth of today's nearly 5.3 million residents were born outside of Ireland. A fifth. 20%. If that pace of change is continued, how sustainable and cohesive can it really be? This has led to a massive rise in anti-immigration sentiment across the Republic. And we've recently witnessed many protests across the country, especially in the more rural areas where the Irish establishment seems intent on putting all those newcomers. And one rather interesting outcome is that one political party, Sinn Féin, which is not in power, has come under fire and its politicians have even recently been called traitors. That charge aimed at a party whose name literally means ourselves or we ourselves or ourselves alone must be hard for them to stomach. Now the people saying this fear that their Irish people and culture are under attack and being replaced by outside people and cultures. And the Irish people have understandably lost trust in and support for Sinn Féin because of Sinn Féin's previous pro-immigration stance as well as the people's fear that if it wins power Sinn Féin would rerun the two recent polls on wokening the Irish family in their constitution where the Irish government suffered the humiliating loss of two overwhelming no votes. So Sinn Féin began to drop in the opinion polls. Go woke, go broke, as they say. With Politico saying, While centrists in Ireland's coalition government face their own backroom tensions over immigration policy, it is the main opposition party, Sinn Féin, which is considered most at risk of splitting its base and shedding support to right-wing rivals. So Sinn Féin has subsequently had to move to where the people probably thought they should be. On the nationalist side of the political argument. Supporting Ireland, its people and its heritage. What many on the socialist side describe as the right or even the far right. And recently Sinn Féin has criticised the new migration compact that the Irish government has already cursorily almost unthinkingly, signed up to. In response to which, Sinn Féin's spokesperson on justice, Patrick Daly, said back in March that the vast majority of measures contained in the EU's Asylum and Migration Pact are not in Ireland's interests. Adding that, Sinn Féin are opposed to open borders. We believe that Ireland needs a well-managed migration system, one that is fair, efficient and enforced. Our international protection system, in particular, is in need of a major overhaul. Hmm. Opposed to open borders, eh? Not that Irish Brexit red line open border across the island of Ireland, though, it seems. 
No, they would never change that. So their borders would still be wide open to the relocation of people from the rest of the EU into the Republic via the UK land bridge that they used to transport goods into and out of the rest of the EU. Now, as an early EU joiner, Ireland can opt out of this new EU migration pact if they so wish. And Sinn Féin now seems to be cottoning on to the fact that the Irish people have had enough. And Daly also said, We simply do not have enough beds in our IPAS system to continue accommodating people who should be in other EU countries. This misuse of beds has resulted in hundreds of migrants sleeping in tents on the streets. This is not sustainable. It seems that the whole Irish political system is having to move towards nationalism because that is what the Irish voter wants. In the past, the woke left with its strident screams about xenophobia, racism and bigotry usually won the day by shouting down and bullying their opposition into submission. These days appear to be ending though. At least in Ireland they are. And with four or so weeks until the EU parliamentary elections, the leader of Sinn Féin, Mary Lou Macdonald, will be balancing where the party will get most of its votes from. The shouty left or the growing voice of the usually silent majority. So the Irish have found their voice and are changing the direction of Irish politics. They can see the danger the globalist drive towards open borders and total free movement of people can have on societies. Especially those societies with generous welfare systems, all paid for by the taxpayer, but increasingly paid out to those who've never contributed. And they can also see the direction of travel, where the erosion of their culture and heritage is concerned. But contrast that to England and the English. Right now we seem to have developed into a troop of ostriches with our heads firmly in the sand where these issues are concerned. That's right, as a collective, we are now in a sort of Anglicus Ostricus phase of existence. Either not caring or hoping that if we ignore it, the problem will go away. The trouble is that the problem is not going away. It is growing, just as these pro-Palestine marches and university takeovers are proliferating. But the English response to this is to punish the Tories for its massive part in bringing all this about by voting in a left-wing mob in the form of Keir Starmer's Labour Party that we all know will make things ten times worse. More net zero, more immigration and more pro-Palestine than the Tories. How perverse can you get? But the real question is, how long can Starmer and Labour stay in power if they continue down the current net zero and immigration path that they love so much? Remember, their pledge is to reverse the Tory dilution of net zero measures as well as employ more civil servants to speed up the asylum seeker approvals process. Will Starmer be forced by public opinion to backtrack on all this later on down the line and potentially be ousted by, maybe, Angela Rayner, or worse? What then when the population finds out that her extreme socialist tendencies are even more untenable than Starmer's, leaving Labour facing ever more nationalist unrest? As the ordinary people wake up, and realise that automatically replacing the Tories with Labour is not a good idea. What then? An early general election forced by the population, maybe? That is a real possibility, given the direction of travel we are now in. And believe you me, should that happen, the Tories will not be ready for government. Whoever replaces Sunak if chosen from within whatever is left of those MPs in Westminster or selected by the same people who put those MPs in place, will not be the right person for the job of rescuing England and the wider UK from imploding. <laughs>